as being humans we're always trying to level up we're always trying to do the next thing and with that next thing comes doubt comes you know low self-esteem comes confusion and all of that and I just keep trying to remind myself in every season that I go into that I just need to trust the Lord with all my heart because everything will work out for the good of those who love him and who have been called and I love my God and I have been called period <laughs> welcome back to my youtube channel my name is sebastiana joyce if you guys are new here hello and welcome thank you so much for joining me today and as per the title of the video i am going to get into some lessons that i've learned in this year of 2023 guys is it just me or i know i say this every year probably but like this year has definitely like just it's literally just flown by so quickly but this year i think i'm definitely finishing as a different person than i was last year and i think it's always important to reflect on obviously who we are where we're going what we're learning what our values are what our morals are so that we can obviously move forward with clearer self-awareness and you know clearer objectives and goals so that we can fulfill whatever it is that we're trying to fulfill in life so self-awareness is key so before i jump into asking god for i want this i want that i want x y and z i feel like it's very important for me to just you know reel it back in take a breather and reflect <laughs> do you know what i mean like we need to just take a minute oftentimes we are so eager to move from one thing to the other without actually you know taking time to just take it easy do you know what i mean like just reflect be mindful be present reflect on the year reflect on what god has already done for you reflect on the lessons that he's taught you and you know think about what you can actually take into the new year rather than asking for new things i need this i need that but what do you actually already have type of thing so yeah i think self-reflection is very important so buckle up it might be a long one because i actually have a lot of lessons but i am only going to give you five lessons that i believe i learned this year in 2023 guys it's 2024 soon can you believe it like this is crazy so obviously this is a chit chat get ready with me so i will be doing my makeup beating my face whilst i'm obviously talking to you guys and i will tell you exactly what i'm using if you are interested in any of the products that i'll be using i will mention it um but this is not a tutorial i'm just letting you know what i'm using and obviously discussing the things that i want to be discussing before we get into the video make sure to give me a thumbs up if you end up enjoying this video comment give me any suggestions your thoughts all of it give it all to me in the comment section down below and also subscribe your girl is trying to get to 1k like help us this out help us this out let's get me to 1000 subscribers amen guys i am missing a nail like my nail broke she's looking ghetto but i'm getting her done soon don't you worry but yeah let's get into the video it's start off i'm using the milk hydro grip primer i do believe like god has really brought me far this year like never did i for a second think that i would be where i am at today um especially in my relationship with god i'm not sure if i've spoken about this on youtube actually but i lost my grandparents um about two years ago nearly two years ago no it's nearly three years ago that's crazy in 2021 february and march literally one after the other like it was very traumatic very painful um and after i had experienced that i really distanced myself from god and i was just very very distant like i still believed in god obviously like god was still someone i looked up to was still someone that i knew existed in my life like i never ever have ever doubted the presence of god and who he is but i was just very distant i was just very you know far away from the word far away from christ i believe because i i obviously know of god but i wasn't truly in his word i wasn't reading my bible i wasn't going to church I literally wasn't even identifying as a Christian anymore like I truly believed in my own like beliefs I went down like this rabbit hole 
on TikTok where I was getting into basically new age spirituality and I was believing all these things and all these conspiracies and like it was just drawing me further and further away from God further and further away from his word because I was just indulging in what I was seeing online and like the own my own kind of ideologies because you know when you go through such a life-changing experience like you just something in you reshifts like something in you changes every experience is going to change you in some way especially traumatic painful experiences like grief so i was just going through a lot of changes i was going through a shift in my beliefs in you know my perspectives on life and i just kept drawing further and further away from god even got to the point where on application forms you know when they ask you to disclose like your personal information like religion age not religion sorry yeah religion um gender sexuality all of that um came to a point where i wasn't even trying to like tick christian like i was like am i a christian though am i like i can't even I identify with that anymore like I literally got to the point where I was literally not <laughs> identifying as a Christian that's how far away I had gone and it was just very I think at that point is when I realized like yeah like me and God <laughs> we're not bros like that anymore like he was obviously still there still trying to draw me in um but i was just like like not with it like i was just far 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 away from god i just use some duo glue on my eyebrows just to stick them back and now i'm gonna go in with my elf halo glow liquid filter i really like this because i feel that it matches my skin quite perfectly so so yeah, I was deep in the world of like, you know, spirituality, meditation, mindfulness. Mind you, mindfulness and meditation is still very, it's still a very useful tool to connect into God. But in the way that I was using it, it was very much self-sufficient vibes. It was very much, I am God. It was very much, I can do, I can manifest, I can, like, it was... I, 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 which is what new age spirituality leads you to believe that you are your own God and you don't need God, you don't need Jesus to do anything and that's the rabbit hole that I was going into and it was toxic, looking back it was scary because if I continued, like, Lord knows where I'd be today, like, I don't know where I'd be, like, I actually don't know. But by the grace of God, I learned that God is my source I am a child of God and I have been called like I am a child of God and no one can ever take that away from me like because the way God came back into my life well obviously he'd never left like I was just obviously distant from him but the way he drew me back into his presence was very I remember telling Miller like one of my best friends like where I was like spiritually and I just knew that she knew that this wasn't gonna be like a long-term thing she knew that I was gonna get back to what I need to get back to it almost in my head it somewhat appears to like have been overnight but I do remember having like conversations here and there with friends with family members I remember having a conversation with my uncle one time and he was like and I was telling him like you know the power of like just listening and silence and meditation and like being mindful and he was telling me about the power of prayer because I told him I hadn't prayed in so long like it's been ages since I prayed and he was like prayer is important talking to God is important I'm just like yeah I just don't know, I don't know. a couple months went by and eventually like something clicked in me and I bought a new Bible God brought me all the way back started fresh got my new Bible and I started reading the word again and a couple of months after that I started going to church one of my friends invited me to her church and I started going to church and I haven't looked back like life has been amazing like literally amazing obviously everyone has their trials and tribulations <laughs> everyone has their trials and tribulations but you know i have god and that's all that matters so i really learned this year that god is my source he will always be my source my father my savior my lord and he will always have me like he will always receive me he will always chase me like god is always there for me and i really understood that this year because i felt like i was so far away that to me it seemed impossible that i would have come back to where I am today, that I would have the relationship with him that I have today. And it just really emphasized that God is 
you know he's just so good so faithful i saw something on twitter that said god had me even when i wasn't talking to him or god had my back or something even when i wasn't speaking to him and facts like i had gone so long without connecting to god reading his word but he was still there for me he still was there drawing me in and period god is my source like he is my source one thing about me yeah i i really do believe i have been called like something in me knows that i have a purpose that i have a mission here on earth like i'm very like meaningful like i i attached meaning to things i know that there's meaning to life i know that there's purpose to my life and i know that we're all here for a reason and period that's it <laughs> that's one thing that has been definitely emphasized to me this year so i'm going to go in with some concealer i'm using my Too Faced born this way multi-use sculpting concealer in the shade chestnut and warm sand then i'm going to use my fenty matchstick in ebony to contour another lesson that i've learned this year which kind of links into my previous point is that god will always make a way i need to always trust in his plan because he knows exactly what he is doing in my life things will always work out and i think i really need to stop like planning so far ahead there's obviously pros and cons to you know having goals and you know being optimistic about the future having like a five-year plan and all of that but i think we need to allow room for god to just be god i think we need to allow room for us to just be present and take things one day at a time for me anyway i feel that i'm very you know focused on where i want to be and who i want to be and what i want to do um because i have this strong drive to be able to like provide for my family and like give us better than what i had growing up and that's always just fueled everything that i do i'm constantly always thinking about what i need to do where i'm going to be like i'm constantly thinking about how i'm going to be successful how i'm going to live a purposeful meaningful life but also be successful in all that i do so that i can take my family out of this type of thing so i'm always planning ahead i'm always trying to look at like five year plans um you know always looking at the big goals when in reality i should really be focusing on obviously the day to day which can go unnoticed no this is not what i wanted to get into yet on my days <laughs> i wasn't ready for that point yet i was just saying that things will work out and that i need to stop planning life like i'm running away from something like you know just chill type of vibes there's a song by maverick city and a few others i think called my life is in your hands and that is just a clear testament to how you know my life is in god's hands like he will do with my life as he pleases and i need to be trusting i need to be accepting and i need to know that things will work out trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths let the lord be a lamp. no let the lord be a lamp to my feet and a light to my path like those scriptures all emphasize the importance of trusting in god and trusting that he is god so we need to let him be god if you've watched my previous videos you will have seen that i was unemployed for some time the program that i was working on had come to an end and we were all losing our jobs <laughs> which like was kind of scary because it was scary but the way i was I, acting throughout the whole thing like everyone in the workplace everyone in my team anyway was like looking for new jobs like as soon as we got the announcement and this was like a year before our contract actually ended so everyone was like looking for jobs and like people were leaving and I was just chilling like I was literally just like you know what will be will be and mind you this is still when I'm like you know quite distanced from God but I was very much like at peace with like what will be will be like I wasn't like trying to rush into anything rush into any applications I was very much like you know be still and know that I'm God but then it came to like I guess three four months before the contract actually ended for real and um that's when i obviously started looking for jobs more diligently and so i was a health and well-being advisor and i was just looking for similar jobs that i could go into and the market was just so dry bro like it was just so dry i know i can be really hard on myself but i just feel like 
we should all have standards we should all have like goalposts of like where we want to be at a specific stage in our life and i just feel like at that point i was 26 going on 27 and i just feel like i wasn't developing i wasn't like where i wanted to be so i gave god like a expected salary and anyone that didn't meet that expected salary i was like no in total i was offered four jobs and i declined three of them before i accepted the fourth one and all three of them i declined because they didn't meet the expected salary although the job role seemed great and we negotiated i was very strict for someone who didn't have a job for someone who wasn't secure that they were going to have an income after the 31st of march i was very much like strict and very much like no um you know like i held myself in like high regards and i wasn't settling for less than what i believed i deserved and at times i did feel like i was being you know kind of stupid kind of um you know just at times i thought i was being greedy yeah i felt like i was like you know just being silly and trying to like be greedy with money but like in this career life that we live like in this nine to five career you know focused life that we live like we have to have these kind of standards these expectations because how are we going to move forward someone actually reached out to me on linkedin um letting me know about the job that i'm currently in and i was so hesitant about it well no i wasn't so hesitant about it they reached out to me and then i ignored them and then when i started seeing that okay maybe i actually need to settle for something soon i went back to the message and they were offering me like a part-time role but it met my minimum expected salary that i told god about and it was part-time evenings or weekends and i was like bro like I don't know i accepted to apply for the job because they reached out to me on linkedin i then accepted to apply for the job to put forward for the role and i did the interview and i passed and when i did the interview it just seemed like it just made sense like the company and the role in itself it just seemed like the next step for me and i was like very at peace when it comes to making decisions you really have to check your heart you really have to check whether you are feeling at peace with things i think peace is so important having that peace of god you know you don't want to make decisions you don't want to accept something that is making you unstable that is making your heart like shaky you want to make decisions that are gonna give you that peace and at that moment like when i was offered the job i did the interview i met with like the, the hiring obviously managers and stuff and i just felt so at peace i just felt like i would i wouldn't mind going into this job like it seems like it'd be the next best step for me although it was evenings and weekends which was i was hesitant about so i accepted the job so i was doing that for about a month and obviously throughout the whole period I, again like throughout the whole period i was very much um content with where i was like i wasn't looking elsewhere for a new job and i was just very like at peace with my role i was at peace with where i was in life and you know what i was doing and i was just so grateful to god that i'd finally had a job and i actually liked the job and you know everything just appeared to be you know okay for me it was all good i was content i was at peace a month into my role um god surprised me and gave me a promotion basically and i got offered a full-time position and i'm on a way higher salary than i expected and asked god for at the beginning of the year so god like exceeded all of my expectations and i was just so like grateful so stunned so like you know because he really didn't have to like especially like i keep saying like i was very distant from god at one time so for, for him to have blessed me the way in which he blessed me in a short period of time was just so crazy to me like wow like i have really been called like you really love me like god does not play about me like god loves me it was a very transformational season for me so god will always provide even guys before i got the job i was even applying for like job seekers i was getting job seekers allowance like i had gotten to that stage of my unemployment that i was seeking benefits like i was getting job seekers allowance and like now it's just a whole transformation it's like god is so good he is just so good so kind so sovereign and it's like 
actually didn't deserve this like I actually didn't so God is really teaching me to trust in him with all my heart and I think this rings true for every season of my life because like I said like we're always trying to move from one thing to the other so I'm happy in my current role and I have everything that I expected to have at this stage but now I'm thinking where am I gonna go next us being humans we're always trying to level up we're always trying to do the next thing and with that next thing comes doubt comes you know low self-esteem comes confusion and all of that and I just keep trying to remind myself in every season that I go into that I just need to trust the Lord with all my heart because everything will work out for the good of those who love him and who have been called and I love my God and I have been called period I think everyone's probably tired of hearing that testimony but I will never shut up about that because God really came through for me like he really showed me who is God and I can't believe it. For my brows I'm just using a normal brown pencil from the hair shop and I'm using the Morphe brow cream in Java and then I use my Born This Way concealer in Toffee to clean it up. As my third lesson that I learned this year is that everything is not what it seems. Stop comparing yourself to the next Bill Bob Harry. Stop it. Stop comparing yourself because everyone's life is just so different everyone's got like their own troubles fighting their own demons like their own tribulations everyone's got their own stuff going on just because you see things portrayed in a specific way does not mean that that is truly what it is and I learned that so deep this year I remember if you guys are into like YouTube couples and YouTube families and all of that like I don't know if you'll know about Nikki and Jamie and this family guys the Perkins like I used to love watching them I just thought they were such a wholesome family on YouTube like they Nikki ended up having two baby girls and like they bought this big house in Australia and they just seem to like be living a really you know wholesome loving life loving marriage and boy some truths came out <laughs> this year about like the you know the behind the scenes like the truth of their relationship and like the things that they'd had to go through as a couple in their marriage and you know it just was very like what they portrayed on camera was just so completely different to what the reality of their situation actually was and it just really made me think that like how much deception social media and the internet is like people will only literally show you what they want to show you like they will only show you the positives of, the, of their lives and they will never you know let you know what's going on that's not particularly good or aesthetically pleasing or it doesn't like fit the brand but like no one's life is perfect like for real for real i'm really trying to remind myself of that every day because being on instagram tiktok you know just being overwhelmed with content all the time and just scrolling my life away i do get into that habit of like you know just comparing things comparing followers comparing aesthetic comparing lives comparing everything comparing bodies and faces and lifestyles i just end up comparing everything and at the end of the day i feel crap about it because it's like wow like you know look at all these awesome people living their lives and here i am and like you know it's just a very negative mindset and mind frame to have i've always obviously known that thief is a comparison of all joy but when things like that happen that really emphasize that everything is not what it seems like a perfect happy marriage that was portrayed on youtube actually turned out to be something very toxic in the real life and it was like this is like the reality of things and you can't compare yourself you literally cannot compare your life your journey to anyone else's because everyone has their own individual path their own individual troubles their own individual blessings you will literally lose yourself and lose sight of your blessings comparing yourself to the next person like really understand that you are in your own lane you have your own journey 
and you have your own blessings and that's really something that has been emphasized to me this year and something that i'm definitely gonna remind myself more and more going into this new year because i can't come and kill myself over comparison and you know just nah like the enemy will really make you believe that you're less than because you don't have x y and z to set my under eye i'm using the fenty pro filter in the shade cashew which is actually my little sister's because my huda beauty is running out and i'm trying to savor her i literally have a droplet the next lesson that i think i've learned this year but i've been trying to really i think i've been trying to learn this year <laughs> this lesson for many years and it just rings true every single time i am responsible for my actions and my reactions. I think it's very important to take accountability for your part to play in any kind of situation. Blaming someone for the way in which you've reacted. Say someone's done something to you and you've reacted in a specific way. Blaming someone for the way in which you've reacted in that situation can be a complete act of cowardice because you are not admitting to your own part to play in the actual situation. You could have done something that could have triggered the person to react in a certain way. And I just think it's really important to really reel that in. You know, we're always so quick to see the flaw in other people and you know point the finger and you know blame people for this that and the other but have you taken time to actually reflect on what you did in that situation and how you contributed to whatever happened well i can be very quick at times especially when it comes to family i think knowing yourself and being able to reflect on yourself and like your own flaws and you know how you can potentially act in situations or like your red flags i think is very important to reflect on i think it's very important to be aware of because you can't live a life just blaming people and not accepting that you know for every action no for every reaction there's an action oh i don't know if that's the other way around but i think we all have a part to play in life we all have a part to play in everything like and i think it's very important to be able to take accountability for what you have done in any given situation don't be scared to admit to your own flaws because healing can often be the end to i guess like conflict with yourself and like not knowing yourself like once you begin to actually understand yourself and perhaps stop fighting against yourself i think that can bring forth a lot of healing when you begin to really understand yourself and have compassion for yourself and how you are as a person and understanding your strengths and your weaknesses bad things happen to people and it obviously contributes to the reason as to why you are the way that you are but it doesn't mean that you should remain the way that you are like you have the choice to obviously change you have the choice to be better and do better i know that i grew up in an environment that caused me to be quite aggressive defensive reactive and i know that about myself i know that i'm doing everything within my power to obviously change to do all the self-work that i can to be better to do better but there's still moments um where for example at home where someone will do something to me and i'll react in a specific way or even at work like when someone says something to me and i feel a type of way like i can often say that those people have taken me out of character when in reality I've taken my own self out of character and I only have myself to blame for the way in which I acted or reacted. I need to do better, I need to control my emotions, my reactions, my thoughts, like I am only responsible for myself and I need to take accountability for that because there's no one else to blame but myself so take accountability for your actions I'm now bronzing with my Charlotte Tilbury matte bronzing filter my last and I think this is one of the hardest lessons I think I'm trying to learn well that I have learned that I'm trying to implement it is as we live our days so we live our lives take that in as we live our days so we live our lives i first heard this quote when i was in church and boy the way i felt attacked i just felt like damn like this is so true like 
as we live our days, so we live our lives. The way in which you live your life every single day will determine the course of your lifespan, where you end up, what you end up doing, and like who you end up being. Like your day-to-day -day life, your day-to-day -day actions, contributes massively i know it sounds like common sense but like when you break it down in that sense it is so it rings so true for me and it really like motivates me because i'm someone who's very i believe myself to be someone who's very creative so i'm constantly thinking of new ideas constantly thinking of new things to do constantly thinking of you know just how to get out of the hood basically like my mind is literally always running with like new ideas i'm gonna try this i'm gonna try that to the point where i get really overwhelmed and when i get overwhelmed i don't do anything i literally don't do anything i sit on the idea and then that's it and then bob's my uncle until i get sprouts of creativeness again and i'm in this thinking spiral and i get overwhelmed again and then i don't do nothing and it's just a constant cycle of me having ideas and not doing anything with them me wanting to do better and not doing anything about it like even when it comes to like my morning and nighttime routine that i struggle with so hard like i really want to be a routine babe because i feel like i operate as my best self when i've got a routine going on when i'm organized and i just find it so hard for me to get into that consistently and i just get so overwhelmed i get really overwhelmed i'm very big on obviously personal development improvement and all of that so i'm constantly trying to or constantly reflecting on things which i actually think is low-key toxic because i can often not be present with myself i'm constantly like just nitpicking at myself and like what i didn't do what i should be doing which can obviously be quite toxic so i'm always in this kind of state of thinking about what I need to do, what I should be doing, what I should be, and I get overwhelmed and I don't do anything. So how do I expect my life to turn out differently? How do I expect for me to reach my long-term end goal? Like, How do I expect to get there if my days are filled with overwhelmingness, are filled with overthinking and anxiety and, you know, procrastination? Like, I'm not gonna get there because as I live my days, so I live my life. I will end up being like that for the rest of my life. God forbid. God forbid. God forbid. Being the overachiever perfectionist that I am, my goals can often be very big and it can often be long term and I struggle to break that down into smaller tasks, smaller goals that I can do on a weekly, daily, monthly basis that would allow it to be more feasible for me to complete and actually achieve. So when I heard that actually being said in church, that just clicked instantly for me because it's like, it's not just about the long shot. It's not about the dream car, the dream house and you know, the holidays or like the bank account. It's about the day to day. It's about fighting the doubt. It's about fighting the procrastination. It's about the day to day battles, the small wins that are gonna get you to the long term. And boy, when that was said to me in that way, well, it wasn't said to me, but it felt like it was literally God like at me, attacking me almost. Um, yeah it was just very much like yeah like you are right you absolutely right laziness is actually a sin and when i think about that i literally <laughs> i literally could crawl up and literally die because god would be so disappointed in me i can be so lazy and it's not laziness because i want to be lazy it's lazy because i'm overwhelmed so then i procrastinate and then i don't end up doing anything and it's just you know i just it's a lot, it's literally so much, it's literally a lot. I'm using my Laura Mercier translucent loose setting powder in medium deep. I'm using my Fenty ultra dimension blush in just a pinch. It's very important to like not sit on things and I sit on things so I need to get my ass up and do things. I need to get out there in these streets. I need to be practical. I need to take it one day at a time and really break my goals down into smaller steps so that I can really achieve the long term goals that I have. But this is just, I'm gonna do better. This year I'm going to do better. I am going to do better. Things will change for me, amen. I'm using my Charlotte Tilbury um, Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. 
So those are the five lessons that I've learned this year. There's obviously plenty more, but for the sake of not talking your ears off, I've given you just five that I think has been really incremental for me this year. I'm human, we're all human, we're all constantly learning and evolving, and I just think reflection is just so key to developing and you know being the best versions of yourself. Self-awareness is key. So just take some time out of your day, out of your week, out of your month to reflect, to reflect on your life during that period. Um, in regards to what went well, what didn't go so well, what you've learned and how you're going to move forward. Take those lessons in, take those lessons forward and continue to develop yourself, continue to learn and adapt and improve yourselves. I believe self-improvement is self-love, is self-care, so I'm all here for it. So yeah, take care of yourself guys. Reflection is key. It is absolutely key. So yeah. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. I really appreciate your time and I'll catch you in the next one. So yeah guys, those are the five lessons that I've learned over the course of this year. There's obviously plenty more, but for the sake of this video and to not talk your ears off, I've given you just five. So make sure you're reflecting, take some time out of your day, your week, your month to really, you know, reflect on that period of your life. Look at what you've learned, look at what went well, what didn't go well and what you can move forward with. And yeah, I think self, reflection is self-love like I think that's the greatest form of self-love to be able to reflect and become more aware of yourself and more aware of your surrounding and situations and things that are happening to you is immensely key to be able to move forward um, in a more improved way so yeah thank you for watching make sure to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching the video leave me any comments any thoughts that you may have any lessons that you've learned for yourself and subscribe your sister's trying to get to a hundred thousand a hundred thousand i mean god willing one day but one thousand small sets first let's get to 1k please and thank you and i will catch you in the next one ciao